Hi folks, welcome back to this next episode, episode number six on the UC4HECs and Oreolet. Now, this is going to be a long episode because we really have to discuss about a lot of stuff. And maybe the first important point would be to answer why do you want to use CAN bus for ECs at all? And maybe this is actually the most important question of all to give a good answer to this point here. And I'm sure that you have heard a couple of reasons for why canvas is a good thing. But I'm also sure that from an electrical point of view, there are some aspects which are important, but which you might not have heard yet. So it would be actually an important thing to discuss this point in great detail. However, I'm not going to do this in this series here. But we still have lots of other stuff to discuss and therefore this episode is being split into three parts and, and in this first part we are discussing a bit the carriers, uh, the, the nodes themselves and the configuration. In the next part we discuss the EC telemetry and what this gives to you and I think this is really an important uh, aspect. And finally we will discuss in the third part the Oreolates. So let's discuss first the hardware. So here you see I have four ECs. I have all the these things here, which are the uh, Oreolates, which we're going to discuss in the third part of this episode. So I'm putting them aside for the moment. And what I also want to mention at this point is that you can build these things also using this UC4H general purpose node. There's a further option, namely to use this, uh, what I call the mini EC nodes. And what I'm using here is this uh, KISS carrier boards. Now, from an electric point of view, all three are basically identical. That means that you can flash or you flash one and the same firmware onto them and they will work. So from, from this point of view, they are, they are any one of them is as good as the other one. There's however one aspect I want you to realize, namely that um, this thing is maybe not very convenient because what you want to have is that, that, the, that the distance between your flight controller and to your EC is mostly covered by the CAN bus and not by this, this whatever protocol you're using to communicate with, from this node to the EC. PWM or D shot or, or whatever. Huh? And, and the reason is simply that because however reliable this communication is between this node and the EC, you want to have it short so that it's really working well huh? because you want to rely on your very robust and, uh, uh, and reliable CAN bus. Okay. Uh, so therefore, um, this thing, sh this thing should go close to your EC. And then you might find it inconvenient to have such big pieces. So you might find it more convenient to have the smaller pieces. And I'm finding it most convenient to have this piece because it also it makes it makes the whole thing a robust, uh, little, cute, uh, yeah, complete thing. It also has the advantage um, that that the wiring is of course simple, simpler, and also the wiring for the Oreo leads is very. It's much simpler. So this here are the connectors for the Oreo leads. Um, I put such servo wires to it with connectors because I like to have connectors to be able to disassemble things. And um, but we're going to talk about this in the third episode. Okay. So you see that there's also this wire coming out, but that's also something we are going to discuss about when we are talking about the Oreo leads. Okay. So these are the pieces, uh, the hardwares. Um, which uh, I'm going to install in this all uc 4 h copter. So this brings us to the configuration of the nodes. And before I describe that, I'd like to give a brief background so you understand better what you're going to do. So let's discuss first the we can message which is used here. It's this raw comment message and it's actually nothing else than an array of values. So for a quadcopter it looks like this. You have a header and a footer of course, but then you have a value array in, with, uh, in array field 0, 1, 2 and 3. And obviously the motor number 1 or the 
node which is related to motor number one uh, should pick out. This value, motor number two will pick out. This value, motor number three will pick out. This value and motor number four, this value. And in order to do that, you have to tell the node here which of them to use. And this is done by what's called the EC index. So for in this node, you set the EC index to zero, which tells it that it takes this value. In this node, you set the EC index to one, which tells it that it uses this value. EC index number two to grab this value and EC index number three to grab this value. So this looks uh, clear. In order to make things a bit more confusing, Autopilot has an additional numbering for the motors, namely motor A, B, C, and D. And you see that it's not uh, correlated uh, directly. And so the situation looks like this. Um, here, this picture is from Autopilot's web page, so thanks for this. And so this is motor number one, which is also called motor A. This is motor number two, which is called motor C. This is motor number three, motor number four. And you see the difference here that this one to three goes, goes around like this, while this labeling motor A, B, Z, D goes uh, in this uh, yeah, sequence here. Okay, so that's the situation how it is. And we have to assign now motor number one with EC index number zero. Motor number two needs to get EC index one. Motor number three, EC index two. Motor number four needs to get EC index number three. Now, in order to not confuse myself, I put a label on each of these ECs. So here you can see a zero, which means that this will be configured with EC index zero. And this also tells me that this EC has to be installed when on this arm. Uh, so I have one other node with the label number one which means it has, I've configured it to EC index number one. And this tells me that this um, EC has to go onto this arm and so on and so forth. Now you might remember that each UV CAN node also needs to have a unique node ID. And again, in order to not confuse myself, I, I follow the following convention that the node that the that the node with, which has the EC index number zero will get the node ID 60 and so on. The one which EC index one gets the node ID 61, the no one with no EC index number two gets node ID number 62 and EC index number three gets the node ID 63. And thanks to having labeled all those things, I always know exactly which node is which and I also know where to put it. So that's a relatively simple convention to follow. And when you follow it, you will, you will find that it's just working. This is what I call the manual configuration mode. There's also another option, namely a script based uh, method. And you can find the script in my repository. And this is actually more convenient because uh, you, you, you just have to do very little things uh, and the script guides you through that. It also has the advantage that you can use this with the ECs already installed into the copter. Um, while this manual configuration you better do before you install the ECs into the copter. And I have also have a mention, uh, a video on this interactive setup. I was not presenting this here because some people might have issues with installing this Python script and so on and so forth. So this manual method I just presented, it will just work. Having understood this, we are now in a position to look at the parameters in the node. So for that, I connected one of the ECs, namely the one with index uh, zero to my SLCAN adapter and here in the UV can GUI tool, you can see that there's a node 60, which is exactly uh, what, what, what it is. And here are the parameters. And first, of course, node ID 60. And then the relevant parameter here is out A1 index. We are just using one channel, namely the output channel A1. And we have set the index here to zero. So for the other nodes, this should be set to one, two, three, and four together with a node ID, which should be set to 60, 61, 62, 63, or whatever convention you use for your node ID, of course. The other outputs us, uh, we keep at minus one, which means that they are not used. So when there are other relevant parameters, there is, uh, which might be noted, there's this mode uh, value, which is set to three, which means that you're using D-shot. 
And since we have just one output enabled, it's DSHOT 600. And then there's also the parameter motor pole pairs, which you should set correctly to according to what motors you're using. In most cases, this will be seven. And this is a value which will be relevant for the EC telemetry. And finally, there's this lead or Rio uh, parameter, and it is set to a value not zero. And this means that uh, the Oreo lead is enabled. Okay, and if, if you're at this point and everything should work, uh, does work, and you start a, a bus monitor, then you should see EC status messages. These are the telemetry messages uh, which are already emitted by the node now. At this point in time, you can install the uh, ECs in the copter. So I've done that already. So you see here, it's installed. Here it's installed and so on and so forth. It's also connected to the CAN bus and the flight controller assembly and so on and so forth. And please make sure that you put the ECs on the right arms. Please follow the scheme here. It's really so easy to get it wrong and then you have to redo or fumble around. So double and triple check that. Once you have done that, we can go uh, to Mission Planner and we will connect the battery and you know the usual warning remove your propellers okay so let's connect the batteries the battery um, connect the usb so we can go to mission planner so we are connected now and the first thing we do is we go to the parameter section, to the CAN bus parameters. And in order to make the ECs to work, what we have to do, we have to set this uh, EC bit mask field to 15 for quadcopter. However, we have done this before in the previous, uh, in a previous episode. So this should be set already. So just please double check that this is indeed uh, the case. Okay. Then we actually can test the motor so we go to the initial setup motor test pane and here we have motor a i usually set this to eight so we can test each motors and of course you know that uh, here you have to test these things actually i have that on such a piece of paper and that's kind of the most important piece of paper in this context which i have because it has all these motors uh, uh, all this info to test it so let's go here i hit a and indeed the motor spins and it spins in the right direction i've already i've of course made this to be correct before if you find that the direction is wrong you have two options you could go into the gui tool and set the parameter to change the direction of the motor or you just swap two of the faces here i'm nearly always doing the letter because it's just so much yeah, so much easier and quicker to just uh, swap them and then and, and, you're set. Okay, let's go through the next motors. Okay, this also is fine. This is also fine. And then the last motor, motor number D. And also this is fine. Okay, so this is it already. So this was easy. At this point, I also should mention that depending on the ECs which you are using, it might be that you have to set up the ECs beforehand. Uh, for example, when you're using PWM, you know that you have to teach the PWM range to the ECs. So this depends on the ECs and that's the normal procedures with ECs. So uh, with the KISS uh, D-Shot ECs, you don't have to do anything and it's as simple as you have seen. Okay. All done.